Hi everyone, it's Professor Primerton. In this video we're going to talk about combining functions. So in this section we're going to talk about the different ways to combine a function to make new functions and also determine the domain of a function using its formula. So in this video we're going to talk about how to determine the domain of a function and how to combine functions using the algebra of functions including the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of functions. So let's talk about the sums, the differences, the products, and quotients of two functions. Suppose you have two functions, f of x and g of x, and you want to combine those two functions using an operation to form a new function. Well, we're going to have functions f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g. These functions are going to be formed in a similar way that we add, subtract, multiply, and divide real numbers. So let's talk about the algebra of functions. So the definition, algebra of functions, let f and g be two functions with domains a and b respectively. So the domain of f is a and the domain of g is b. Then the functions f plus g, f subtract g, f times g, and f divided by g are defined as follows. So number one, the sum function is f plus g, that's the name of the function, is evaluated at an input value of x, and this is the definition. You take the two functions and you add f of x and g of x. The domain of this sum function is the intersection of the domains of f and the domain of g. So in other words, it's the x values or the input values that are in common in the domain of f and the domain of g. The difference function is f subtract g of x, and so notice that the name of the function is f subtract g, so the order is important. You have the function f, then subtract g, so it's f of x, subtract g of x is the definition of the difference function. Its domain is also a intersect b, or in other words, it's the intersection of the domain of f and the domain of g. Again, it's the x values or the input values that are in common with the domains of f and g. The product function is f times g of x, and so this is f times g, so f of x times g of x is the definition of the product function. Its domain is the same, it's a intersect b, or the domain of f and the domain of g, what's in common, what x values are in common between the two functions, and that's the domain of the product function. And so note that the product function is f times g, it's not to be confused with the composite function f of g, which we'll talk about in the next video. And then number four, the quotient function is f divided by g, that's the function's name of x, and it's defined this way. Notice that f is in the numerator, so it's f of x in the numerator, and g is the denominator of the function's name, so it's divided by g of x. And so the order is important here as well. If f is in the numerator, so it is f of x, and if g is in the denominator, so, so is g of x. The domain of this quotient function is the set of all x values that are in the domain of f and also the domain of g, but you also have to exclude the x values where the denominator, g of x, is equal to zero. So it cannot be equal to zero whenever you plug in x into the function g, because that would make the denominator zero. So the whole function would be undefined. So example one, we're going to form combinations of functions and also find their domains. So let f and g be two functions defined as follows. f of x is going to be the function x attract one in the numerator divided by the denominator x plus three, and g of x is the function 3x attract 1 in the numerator, and x attract 1 in the denominator. Find the following and determine the domain in each case. Number one, we're going to find the sum function f plus g of x. So using the definition of the sum function, that is f of x plus g of x, so we're going to add the two different functions together and simplify. So f of x was x attract 1 in the numerator divided by x plus 3 in the denominator, plus the other function was g of x, 3x minus 1 in the numerator, and x minus 1 in the denominator. Notice that if we want to simplify this sum function, we need to add the fractions, we need a common denominator, or least common denominator. So LCD would be the product of the two different denominators. You need an x plus 3 factor, and you need an x minus 1 factor. So it's the product of x plus 3 and x minus 1 is the LCD. So now rewrite both terms, or both fractions, so they have the same denominator. So the first fraction will have this, the denominator x plus 3 times x minus 1, and so will the second term, or second fraction, will also have the same denominator. So notice that the first fraction is missing the x minus 1 factor in its denominator, so we need to multiply the numerator and denominator by x attract 1, and the second fraction, or second term, is missing the x plus 3 factor from its denominator, so we multiply the numerator and denominator by x plus 3 in the second fraction. And so now that you have the same denominators in both fractions, you can add the numerators. So we need to simplify the numerators. You have x minus 1 times x minus 1, you need to multiply those out by using the FOIL method, and then you also have 3x minus 1, that factor times x plus 3 factor, and so again, use the FOIL method to simplify. And so when you do that, you'll have x squared plus x subtract x minus 1 from the numerator. Then the second fraction, you will have 3x squared plus 9x 
subtract x, subtract 3, and then keep the denominator the same when you add fractions. So the denominator is still the LCD, x plus 3 times x minus 1. And if you simplify the numerator, you'll have 4x squared plus 8x subtract 4, and the denominator is still x plus 3 times x minus 1. And so this is called the sum function. This is simplified completely. You can factor out a 4 from the numerator, but there's nothing else that would cancel. You have a 4 taken out from the first term. You have an x squared left. You take out a 4 from the second term. You have a 2x left. And the 4 factored out from negative 4 will leave you with a negative 1. So 4 times the parentheses, x squared plus 2x minus 1, divided by x plus 3 times x minus 1 in the denominator. And so that is the sum function simplified. Notice that there are no common factors to cancel in the numerator and denominator. But the only way to figure out if you have a common factor is to make sure that the numerator is factored completely and the denominator is factored completely. And there are no common factors that you can see. The domain of the sum function is the domain of the function f and also the domain of the function g. What x values do they have in common? So let's find out the domain of f. Notice that you cannot substitute an x equals negative 3 into the denominator of the function f because you'll have division by 0. So x plus 3 cannot be equal to 0, and that means x cannot be equal to negative 3 because the first function, f of x, will be undefined whenever x is negative 3. Same thing with the function g of x. Notice that you cannot plug in x equals 1 into the denominator for g of x because that will make the function undefined. And so x minus 1 cannot be 0, and so x cannot be equal to 1. So that means that the domain of your sum function is the set of all x values except x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. And so how can you write that using interval notation? It would be parentheses negative infinity to negative 3, and then union negative 3 to 1, union 1 to infinity. It's a set of all x values except you're excluding negative 3 as an x value because that would make the function f of x undefined, and also x equals 1 is excluded because that would make the function g undefined. All other x values, the function f of x plus g of x, or the sum function, is actually defined. Number two, let's talk about the difference function f subtract g of x. So the difference function, the definition was f subtract g of x, the order is important. So f comes first, then subtract g. So f of x subtract g of x. And so again, we can't subtract fractions unless we have a common denominator. And so you'll have x subtract 1 divided by x plus 3, subtract 3x minus 1 all divided by x minus 1. And so the LCD in this case, or the least common denominator, is x plus 3 times x minus 1 again. And so we need to rewrite this so we have the same denominator for both fractions. It's going to work exactly like the last problem. You need to multiply the first fraction by x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 because the x minus 1 factor is missing from the denominator of, of, of f of x. So x minus 1 times x minus 1 in the numerator minus from the difference between the functions. The second fraction is missing the x plus 3 factor. So 3x minus 1 in parentheses times x plus 3 in parentheses. And the denominator is x plus 3 times x minus 1. That's the LCD or least common denominator. And so again, we need to simplify this function because there could be a common factor that we could cancel out from the numerator and denominator. So FOIL x minus 1 times x minus 1, and so you'll have x squared minus 1 again. But then when you FOIL the 3x minus 1 times x plus 3, keep in mind that the negative sign out in front will change all the signs. So you'll have 3x times x, that's 3x squared, but you'll have a negative 3x squared. You have 3x times 3, that's 9x, but then the negative sign will make it negative 9x. You'll have negative 1 times x, that's negative x, but the negative sign will make it plus x. And then negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. The negative sign will make it plus 3. So if you simplify the numerator, you'll have negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 2. And the denominator stays the same when you add or subtract fractions. And so it will be x plus 3 times x minus 1, the LCD. And then if you factor out the negative 2 from the numerator, you'll have negative 2 times, you'll have a negative 2 taken out from the first term. You have an x squared left. If you take negative 2 out from the second term, you'll have a plus 4x left. And if you take a negative 2 out from positive 2, you'll have a negative 1 left. And the denominator stays the same, x plus 3 times x minus 1. Notice that the x squared plus 4x minus 1 does not factor any further, so this is simplified completely. There are no common factors in the numerator or denominator. And so this is the difference function, negative 2 times the quantity, x squared plus 4x subtract 1, all divided by x plus 3 times x minus 1 in the denominator. And so let's find out the domain. Well, it's the same as the domain of the last problem. The sum function and the difference function have the same domain. It's the x values that are in common with the function's domain of f and the function's domain of g. And so we have to throw out x equals negative 3 from the function f, and we have to throw out x equals 1 from the function g, because otherwise our difference function will be undefined. The function f will be undefined whenever x is equal to negative 3, and the function g will be undefined whenever x is equal to 1. And so the domain is also negative infinity with a parenthesis, 
to negative 3, union negative 3 to 1, and then union 1 to infinity, just like with the last problem with the sum function. Okay, number 3. This time we're going to find out the product function, f times g of x. So the definition of f times g of x was f times g is f of x times g of x. You multiply the two functions together to find the product function. f of x was x subtract 1 divided by x plus 3, that fraction. And then g of x is 3x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. And remember, if you multiply fractions, you do not need a common denominator. You multiply the numerators together and you multiply the denominators together when you simplify. And so x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 will actually be 1 when you simplify. So they'll cancel out those factors in common. And so 3x minus 1 divided by x plus 3 is the product function when it's simplified. Notice that there are no common factors in the numerator or denominator. 3x minus 1 is different from x plus 3. And so again, the domain of the product function, if we want to find it, is also the domain of the difference function or the sum function. It's the x values that are in common with the domain of f and the domain of g. And so notice the first function, f of x, is undefined whenever x is equal to negative 3. And notice that the function g of x is undefined whenever x is equal to 1. So we have to throw out x equals negative 3 and we we'll throw out x equals 1 from the domain of the product function. And so the domain of the product function is negative infinity with the parentheses to negative 3, union negative 3 to 1, union 1 to infinity. Same as the domain of the difference function and the sum function. And now number 4, the quotient function f divided by g of x. And so the quotient function, the definition was the numerator is f, so f of x, and the denominator is g, so the g of x is in the denominator of the fraction. So f of x divided by g of x, f of x was x minus 1 divided by x plus 3. You want to divide by the fraction 3x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. And so how do you divide fractions? You multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction that follows the division sign. So the first fraction stays the same, or f of x stays the same, x minus 1 divided by x plus 3. But then you need to multiply by the reciprocal of the function g, so which will be x minus 1 is now in the numerator, and 3x minus 1 is now in the denominator. And so notice that you don't have any common factors now that cancel out. You're multiplying, so you don't need a common denominator. You have an x minus 1 times x minus 1 in the numerator. Well, we've done this one before. You'll have x minus 1 times x minus 1. That's x minus 1 all squared. And the denominator is x plus 3 times 3x minus 1. You can keep it in factored form because we want to see if there's any common factors in the numerator and denominator. So x plus 3 times 3x minus 1 in the denominator. And so now let's find out the domain of the quotient function. The quotient function's domain is all x values that are in common with f and g, but also the x values where the denominator is equal to 0. So in this case, the g is in the denominator, so we want to find out what x values will also make g of x equal to 0. So we have the denominator of f of x, that would be x plus 3, that cannot be 0, so x cannot be negative 3. We have the denominator of g of x, that would be x minus 1, that cannot be 0, so x cannot be 1. But then where is g of x equal to 0? And so g of x was this fraction, 3x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. That fraction is equal to 0 if the numerator is 0. So we want to find out where is 3x minus 1 not equal to 0. And so if you solve that equation, you'll find out that x cannot be 1 third. So we have three x values that need to be excluded from the domain of the quotient function. We have x cannot be negative 3, x cannot be 1, and x cannot be 1 third. So how do you write this using interval notation? You'll have principally negative infinity to negative 3, because negative 3 occurs first on the number line. Union, negative 3 to 1 third, because 1 third comes second. It comes before x equals 1. So negative 3 to 1 third with parentheses. Union, 1 third to 1. And then union, 1 to infinity. You'll have four separate subintervals that you'll need to union between each interval. And so this is the domain of the quotient function f divided by g. So let's finish up this video talking about graphical addition. If you want to find out the graph of the sum function, it's only applying to the sum function for graphical addition. You have f plus g. You want to find out the graph of f plus g, but you only have the graphs of f of x and g of x. This means that you need to add the corresponding y-coordinates of the two functions f of x and g of x when the x values are the same. So let's look at a graph to illustrate what's going on with graphical addition. So you have one function that's y equals f of x. And you have another function that's y equals g of x, and you want to graphically add these two functions together to get the sum function. What is the graph of the sum function f plus g? Well, I've labeled one x value that they have in common. So let's say you have one point x comma y1 on the graph of f of x, and you have x comma y2 on the graph of g of x. How do you find the point that is corresponding on the sum function f plus g of x? Well, you keep the x coordinate the same, 
and you add the corresponding y coordinates. So you would add y1 plus y2, and this is a point whenever x is the same as the other x coordinates. The y coordinates you add together to get the point that would be on the graphical addition f plus g of x. And so if you do this for every single point that's on f of x and g of x that the x values are in common, then you would get this graph f plus g of x, which is the sum function. And so to find the sum function f of x plus g of x, or f plus g of x, you add the corresponding y values when the x values are in common between f of x and g of x. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we talked about how to find out the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient functions, and also their domains. And we also talked about graphical addition. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about composition of functions and their domains.